It's uh, been about two or three months since I've uh, forged anything. Uh, I've been cleaning and doing other projects. You guys have seen that. So what we're gonna do today is, is one, we're gonna christen the new anvil and we are gonna try and make a leaf. The reason why I'm choosing a leaf, a leaf is uh, probably the easiest project that you can do and it focuses on a lot of the skills that are basic to blacksmithing. You, know, you got drawing out, making a taper, isolation, creating reductions, all that fun stuff, and you get to do a little bit of detail work. You also got to take stuff from squared around and all that fun. So that's what we're going to focus on. I'm going to show you the process before we actually start, and then we'll actually go into the process and I'll make stops explaining that as we go along. So, and be nice to me down in the angry section. This is my first forging video. So first up in our process is we're gonna heat this bad boy up. Probably get about six to eight inches of it nice and uh, good and warm. And we're gonna bring it up at an angle that we feel is appropriate. And we're gonna come down and we're gonna forge a taper on all four sides. So when this is done, it's gonna have a nice point to it. It's gonna be down. Next step that we're gonna do is we're gonna come over and we're gonna decide how big we want our leaf. And then we're gonna do half face blows on this to uh, create an isolation and a reduction here. And that'll be the beginnings of our stem. Now once we get to that point, I'll come back to the other side of the anvil. So I'll have my point I'll have my first reduction and then I'll come back probably an inch or so on this side, go to the opposite corner and start doing half face blows here to get a reduction here and that will be the basis for our stem. Now once we have that, then I'll start working on drawing out the stem. Uh, I'm going to try and use the edge of the anvil, worst case scenario, I'll come up here to the horn on this end and I'll draw it out over the horn to uh, get that stem started and get it started out. All right, I'm gonna fire the forge up for real right now and uh, let the audio play a little bit so you get an idea on how loud the forge is. Now in person, there's not a whole lot of, like you can have a conversation with somebody, but I don't know how this is gonna translate to on my video camera. I don't have a microphone yet, so uh, hopefully it's not too bad. We'll see how it goes on this one. If you guys can hear me fairly well while I'm talking and the forge is rolling we might do an approach like that but if it's too jumbled up I'll probably just shut the forge down talk a little bit fire it back up we got our first heat in here I'm gonna go back about oh actually we're gonna go like that She's cooled off a bit. I don't want to keep forging it because I don't want to make it brittle. So back into the fire we go. All right, we got our point fairly well established here. It's a bit longer than what I wanted, but we'll make that work. Just like Bob Ross says, there's uh, no mistakes, just happy coincidences or something like that. But the next thing that we're gonna do is, is we're gonna come back a little bit and we're gonna do a reduction all the way back on two of these sides, 
So if we start it on this corner, we'll reduce that back to this corner and that'll create our isolation. Now, we're gonna lay this, we're gonna cut back a little bit, and we're just gonna do half face blows. start to see already so we got the reduction there we started our reduction on this side she cooled off too much and to prevent stress fractures I'm gonna stop there and then we're gonna throw it back in the forge and we're gonna keep on working on this reduction and then we're gonna draw this out so we'll have a stem all right so one of the things I'm gonna be real careful now is, is uh, we got this weight on the end the skinny point here that'll bend back and forth both of our isolations in. Ooh, that's warm right there. Uh, we got both of our isolations in. Now we're gonna dough and we're gonna draw out this part so we can actually have uh, a stem. things I want to talk about real fast while it's heating up again because it's going to heat up real fast is, is the more you get into this and the thinner everything goes I said it before I'm going to say it again the faster it's going to heat up what does that mean that means your forearm is going to get more worn out because you're going to be having to hammer faster and quicker to get the most out of each heat and the biggest thing that I can tell you if you actually ever go to do this is you want a loose grip on the hammer now for my oil field friends that have or or watching this what that means is, is you're not swinging and putting 1502 or two inch or three inch together you're not dealing with that you're doing light taps so you're not having a death grip you're having a nice light grip and what that should mean is, is when you bring your hammer up if somebody was standing behind you they should be able to grab the head of the hammer and pull it out of your hands before you can close so you want a nice light grip and that's also going to extend on how long you're able to forge all right so we got this drawn out fairly well i don't want to try and keep drawing it out like this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try and set up a hardy cut tool or a hot cut tool, one or the other, and we're going to slice this, and then we're going to start working on rounding this up, and I'm going to swap from holding on to the raw stock myself to an actual set of tongs, so I'll have to figure out which one's going to fit this the best. Just realized I haven't finished my uh, hot cut tool, so we're going to take this jackhammer bit that I bought for about 15 bucks, we're going to use that to slice it off. Hopefully I have enough hands. There we go. She cut off. Now I'm going to grab a set of tongs. It's going to work best for holding on the leaf bed. We're going to draw out the stem a bit further. I think that's drawn out enough, probably too much. Well, I'll probably end up having to cut a little bit off the end, just to make it look a little bit better. So the next thing that I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna change tongs, or I'm actually gonna keep the same tongs, and we're gonna try and, we're gonna start rounding this out. And we're gonna work on each corner, taking it from square to octagon, and then from octagon, we'll take it to round. We're gonna swap hammers real fast. 
because I want to flatten the hammer now. She's uh, fairly rounded up. I wouldn't call it perfect. You can tell it's been forged, but uh, good enough for the girls I don't date. So now we're gonna go and we're gonna work on actually making the leaf. So now we have a leaf. At this point, you can choose to make it as thin or as thick as you want, depending on your skill level, depending on what you want. Uh, I'm probably gonna take another heat, try and thin out the uh, stem here a little bit more, and then the next time we come back, uh, we're gonna try and put some veins in here so it looks a lot more like a leaf and less like a spade. Now we have this, I'm gonna kinda rest the tongs up. I'm just gonna tap it in. There's our first line and now we'll do the veins outside. I'll probably There's the first half. We will, I'll throw this back in, get it heated back up, do the other side, and then uh, I'll come back to you when that's done, and we'll start doing something with the stem here to make it look a little bit more pretty. Well, there's our leaf. It's forged out. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat it up one more time. I'm gonna try and get as much of this forged scale off, and then we're gonna dunk it in some oil to finish it off. This project is one of those things that, like Alex Steele said in uh, one of his videos, if you really wanna get good, take a weekend and like make a hundred of these, or just keep on working on them, and You'll get better and you're better and better and you'll notice the difference between each one as you progress. Now, I don't have to, I'm not quenching this to get it hard or anything along those lines. The only thing I'm doing is I'm gonna put this in there when the steel's hot, roughly 500 degrees or so, and that's gonna keep the pores open on the steel to absorb that to help prevent rust. Now, I don't know how well you guys are gonna be able to see this. Kind of see the discoloration in the black part there? What I got on there is forge scale. And despite my best efforts, I've never been able to get rid of all of that. So, this is cooled down enough. We're gonna dunk it in some WD-40. And the reason why I like doing WD-40 is uh, for whatever reason, it seems like it gives a, a bluish finish instead of just like a straight black compared to like linseed oil or regular oil that I've used to uh, dump it. So now we got it out. It's kind of cooling off. We'll keep it in there a little bit and then to cool it off the rest of the way, since it's soaked in oil, we're gonna throw it in some water. So, Got it cooled off, obviously. I'm gonna see if I can do some camera tricks here with the whiteboard. What? Here's our leaf. There's our veins. It's all twisted up. 
Now, this part right here is a little bit straighter than what I wanted to. I could have uh, spent more time undone this and then uh, really get that nice and round so it curled up real nice. But the thing I wanted to show you, like I was talking about for stress risers, let's see if I can get in there. Uh, I don't think it's gonna show up. But right there, you can kind of see it in the video. There's that line and that's where uh, it wanted to start to break. It's not that bad. It's definitely there though. So what that tells me is, is uh, working on the stem with this right here, I worked it a little too much and uh, started creating stress in there. So uh, yeah. So for the first time forging in a couple of months, I have to say I'm relatively pleased with this. Uh, obviously I have a lot more learning to do, but it's uh, came out fairly well. Uh, veins a pretty even couple of double misses where the chisel skipped and left a mark where it shouldn't have uh, I need to make an actual chisel for doing this sort of thing maybe I might do that in a future video now obviously I could have worked on that uh, square part right there but all in all not too bad I'll consider this a success but every project something to learn from uh, before we go to ending credits here or ending fun stuff I want your guys' opinion on what you want to see me do next here in the forge. Uh, you want me to see me make some tools, do some tempering, hardening, things like that. You want to see me try and make a tomahawk, or do you want me to finish up a project for uh, my sister? Uh, a little simple pot holder that goes on there. It's already partially done. I'll explain what I did in that video for what I already have done and then we'll go on to making the brackets and all that fun stuff. We'll do some punching, we'll do some upsetting, some 90 degrees with that. Uh, obviously the tomahawk, never made one before. It'll be a totally new thing for me. So there's that and then uh, if it's making tools, I'll pick a tool and we'll go from there. It'll either be a set of tongs, I got a bunch that I need to finish. Uh, could be a hot chisel or a punch, something along those lines. Uh, maybe even finishing up a hot cut or starting one from new. So uh, yeah, let me know. Um, ending credits. So, woohoo! Anyways, I hope you guys like it. I hope you enjoy it. Um, hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment down there in the angry section with your jazz hand routine. So, uh, Fabricable on.